We are not getting a divorce. We are not getting a divorce. We are not getting a divorce. Wait for it. Divorce. Hello, welcome to the Super Divorce Supercast, it's a sequel show, and I'm Nick Villars, the vocalist. To I'm, my right is... Uh, I'm Bender, I'm the drummer, and I'm too excited to be here. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Get it? I'm Dale, I guess I'm the sequel bass player of this little group here. No, um, well, you're the well, original. Well, of the group, not the band. <laughs> He's the original bass player in Super Divorce. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, of this group of guys. Depends. So, yeah. Because before he came in, I was playing bass for a while. That's, oh, oh, shit. Sequel. Yeah. sequel yep. Bases. Either way, I'm the sequel. Yep. Yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> That's you're a, okay. <clears throat> well, he's a sequel person, too. He's a T2. Just like you. To your T1. Robert Tolman Jr., your mm -hmm. sequel. Guitar. And sequel to my father. <laughs> I'm a sequel to my father, too. That is wild. Yeah. Lots of sequels. That's cool. I get I get to see my dad tomorrow, and that'll be cool. <laughs> I'm not a sequel. <laughs> Me neither. I have a sequel middle name. Originals. I share the same middle name with my dad, so my middle name's a sequel, but I'm not personally a sequel myself. I have no ties to anybody. No one's sequel. <laughs> your, your middle name is your dad's first name, Nick, right? No. Wait, hold on. What? No. I thought your dad's name was Randy Villars. Mm-hmm. Nicholas Randall Villars. But so. there's a secret about my dad. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad's secret is that his first name is actually John. Oh. And he does not like that. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. he's always going by Randy. You want to hear something funny? I, uh, I searched your dad on YouTube one day. And we listen to some of his stuff. Mm -hmm. and that I was surprised how many views some of his... It's just like a song with the album art in the background. Like 10,000 views. You know? It's pretty pretty interesting. Pretty crazy. Yeah. Talented dude. Was he, was he playing uh, saxophone? Or was mm -hmm. he playing... Nice. Yeah. Randy Villars. Didn't really like those albums very much, though. He doesn't? No. Wow. Cause it's like when he was doing like the smooth jazz kind yeah. of stuff, and he's always wanted to do straight ahead, but it's always been like, I don't know. I guess there's not as much of a market for straight ahead jazz, okay. or at least there wasn't in the 90s. Yeah. So he got with a producer who was like, we're going to stay within these four walls of oh, smooth yeah. jazz. And you told me about yeah. that, and your dad was always trying to bust down the yeah. walls. Yeah. <laughs> the guy would get pissed. Yeah. <laughs> They were recording in his house, and there was one blow up where the guy just said, you know, well, then you do the fucking producing, and just, like, shoved his keyboard and walked out of the room, <laughs> and my dad just, like, sitting in this guy's house. <laughs> uh, With his saxophone. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Ken Navarro, that's the guy's name. <laughs> Dave Navarro's <laughs> a strange brother. <laughs> So Maybe his, his evil clone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I kind of feel like Dave Navarro is Dave Navarro's evil clone. Yeah. Yeah. Because there could be, yeah, his Batman symbol tattoos would just be flipped upside down. Yeah. So you wouldn't hardly notice it at all. <laughs> you wouldn't notice it because yeah. it's uh, <laughs> symmetrical. <laughs> How about Batman sequels? Yeah. What's your, what's the your Dark Knight Dark is Knight. a sequel, and it's considered the definitive <clears throat> Batman movie of the Chris Nolan trilogy, at least. Would yeah. you say that it's uh, better than um, or worse than Batman and Robin? <laughs> <laughs> it depends on how you look at it, honestly. If you look at it as. If you look at Batman and Robin as a campy like throwback to the 60s Batman with Adam mm -hmm. West and stuff. I'm sure it gives you a whole different perspective on the movie. Everybody wanted a darker, dingier, serious Batman though at that time. So a darker why, night. Yeah. 
But what they got was Joel Schumacher's version of the 63 Batman, which people still love that show. Yeah. I mean, I remember a guy I knew had a had a sleeve, a tattoo sleeve mm-hmm. of characters from the 63 Batman. Um, I wonder you what might know him too. I might. <laughs> yeah, Pat. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Remember so. he had yeah a, he had a couple Caesar least, Romero uh, and that version of Joker tattooed on him. So a lot if, of people like it. What if uh, you mentioned Joel Schumacher? Yeah. What if Joel Osteen got a Batman film? <laughs> Would <laughs> you we, watch that? What no. would he play? No. Did he play Batman? No, he's no, just he's the one making right. the movie. Oh, he's the one making no, it. I guess no, he I, could I, he could put himself in the role of Bruce Wayne. He would put himself in there. Look at him. <laughs> he yeah, could definitely do that. <laughs> I don't know if he could. Well, I was thinking that he's always squinting. Oh, if yeah. you ever look mm-hmm. at Joel Osteen? Um, <laughs> so so I don't know if he's going to be able to <laughs> see the crime take place. <laughs> Huh. So uh, the Lord will guide him. Oh yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. It's Berry. like his oracle. It's just yeah. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, yeah, that's that's a weird thing, you know. Like Ben Carson, I feel like Ben Carson would get mad. I feel like he thinks Jesus is his own personal homeboy, mm-hmm. and that's it. You think other people get jealous of? You think there's a person out there who has a, such a close relationship with Jesus that they get jealous of others' relationships with Jesus? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> My best friend. <laughs> get your own. Yeah. Get your own best friend. I could see that. Get out of here. Yeah. It has to have happened at some point. Yeah. The earth is... Christianity's been a, around too long. Hey, the New Testament, there's a sequel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was thinking about that. <laughs> Much better than the original, I think. <laughs> the Old Testament is uh, is scary. Well, I think it had more action, didn't it? <laughs> That's yeah. true. For all you action fans. Yeah, uh, there's more war and definitely, yeah. Shit. yeah. The, uh, vengeance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the more exciting yeah. Bible stories are definitely... Killing of the firstborn. Old, yeah. Old yeah. Testament. Yeah. Moses, that's a good one too. <laughs> what if they would have done like Die Hard two, in you know sort of the same vein as the New Testament? They took that approach to it. <laughs> so John McClane just turns a new leaf and yeah, gets preachy about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. No, what he would do is he'd walk up to Hans Gruber, offer him peace. <laughs> Hans would punch him in the face. And he'd turn and the, other turn the other cheek. <laughs> Let him punch the other side. But it would go on for a long enough time until he finally snaps and you get to the book of Revelations and he just like rains the apocalypse down on everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of Christian denominations disagree on the Revelations thing. Some some Christians just don't even buy into Revelations at all. Mm-hmm. I don't think Catholics are big on Revelations. I, uh, they're not talking about Jesus rising from the grave or anything. They're, they just... It's all about salvation, you know, through um, confession and, uh, you know, all that stuff. Let's not talk about that. Well, uh, (laughs) the Pope already said everyone was saved, right? Yeah, that's what I heard. If there is a heaven, I think we'll be there. Yeah. And uh, Super Divorce will be taking over that shit yes. in heaven. <laughs> is, uh, all, is your, the... all your bullshit super groups that everybody's making up all the time? Yeah. No. no. <laughs> super Divorce steps be us. in that game. Just waiting for us. Yeah. Is the Pope a sequel? Yeah, yeah. I would have yeah. to say, because the, the original Pope was um, one of the disciples. It was... Peter, I think. Either Peter or Paul. One of the P's. I think was the original. Not Mary. No. <laughs> it wasn't Mary. Mary's highly regarded, though, in the Catholic Church. People pray to Mary, don't they? Yeah. Mm-hmm. People Why? pray to saints, too. That's silly. Yeah. <laughs> I was just talking about that last night with Lindsay. We're, I was saying that I had recently added the girl on Facebook that I used to go to youth group with, like, back in 8th grade, freshman year of high school and stuff like that, and, uh, like, I had seen some of her status updates, and it was like, you know, such and such happened today, just trying to remind myself of, like, quote, Bible verse here, 
Yeah. And then, like, analyze what the Bible verse means and then apply it to daily life. And I was just like, my immediate first thought was, like, are you still <laughs> doing that? <laughs> like, you're you're still into Jesus? Like, yeah. you never, you never grew, brain grew yeah, you never outgrew yeah. yep. the ridiculousness of it. Well, maybe like, she has a, she might have a very strong, devout family. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, sort of, but... And I know I've got plenty of friends that I used to go with that will still go to church, yeah. you know, but they're not like posting on Facebook about their Bible right. verse of the yeah. day and what they learn from it and how they're going to apply it to their life. And yeah. Well, the Bible doesn't go into Facebook etiquette. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why I need an update. Yeah. I go back in. He's part three. Yeah. Sequels. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Maybe uh, we should... I was gonna say, yeah, maybe we should. Uh, should we do a best of the sequels? Should we talk about our favorite sequels worst in different of. media and worst of sequels? Um, yeah. If you have one uh, that you're thinking of, I was just kind of. I was actually before you said that I was gonna mention mm-hmm. Boondock Saints too. Oh yeah. We're talking about Saints. Okay. Uh, so, I don't know if anyone. I've is seen that a straight to DVD film. No, was it, it no. came out in theaters. It had a limited release. Oh, okay. Yeah. One of those, yeah. To where like no what nowhere in Ohio played it. I bet. Okay, sort of like Tim and Eric's billion dollar movie or something. I went there. to see it, but I can't remember where, where Maybe it like was. Yeah, the Esquire or something. Yeah, like something, like, something that. like that. I've never seen Boondock Saints or Boondock Saints Two. The first, I've only seen the first one, and it's awesome. Yeah, I've seen good. the second one. I think they're good. Yeah. It's one of those where it's sort of like Fight Club. Like everyone our age has seen it. Like every male, and they're all like, "Yeah, it's sweet," you know. But for whatever reason, I never saw it. I didn't see Fight Club till I was like twenty five. So that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, but I love it. It's, it's great. great. Fight, there's a Fight Club got a sequel. No. Yeah. Did. Was it any good? I'd Fight Club heard. Two. It's in comic books right now. Oh well. Mm. Technically, a sequel to the that, book. Yeah. Oh. I don't know how true the movie a, was. Oh, it was a movie. Fight Club Two was a movie. No, no, no. no. Oh, I was gonna say. There's okay. the book and then the movie, and then this year or like last year, Fight Club Two is a comic book, and okay. it's real. It's Chuck, whatever his name is, is writing it. Uh, yeah. Oh, the guy who wrote the, the guy book that wrote Fight Club is writing wow. Fight Club Two. Yeah. That's fucking sweet. Because I I actually. Before I saw the movie, somebody loaned me the book to read it. For a uh, guy I, I lost touch with, cool dude. I worked as a security guard with him, uh, and he was like, "Man, the book is, you know, the movie's really good." He didn't knock the movie, but he, <laughs> he's like, "A lot of people don't know it's a book, <laughs> yeah, you know, just because of the vast popularity of the movie." But he uh, he loaned it to me, and I read it in like two days i just couldn't couldn't put it down and uh that inspired my like way of thinking for a little while i think yeah it's like fuck the establishment (laughs) you know you are not a unique snowflake you know (laughs) we are you know we're pissed off because we were promised all this shit and you know to reach your dreams without any resistance and then find out that we're all shining your shoes and guarding your fucking, you know, gate entrances to power plants like I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Same guy let me borrow uh, Wanted. Or he told me about Wanted. The graphic novel. The movie. Oh. Which is weird because he was an advocate for the book of Fight Club, but... The movie for Wanted? The movie for Wanted. <laughs> I don't know if he knew it was a graphic novel or not. Because I didn't find out it was a graphic novel till after I'd seen it. But uh, I, I like the movie a lot. I've heard the graphic novel is much better, though. And it goes into more detail. Yep. I haven't read it, though. I don't know yet. I have not either. Yeah, try but, that. But, uh... No sequel to Wanted, though. Nope. What's uh, What do you guys think is a sequel <clears throat> that probably should not have been? <laughs> I was thinking about this, like, throughout the week, and it's it's hard. It's hard to come up with sequels that you think just completely sully the name of the original. Yeah. 
See, you know? Yeah. Like, there's bad sequels. Mm-hmm. But there's, there's, se- there's bad sequels, there's unnecessary sequels, where yeah. it's like, you're just happy to have another one, even though it it doesn't really matter. Right. I mean, like, I, f- I feel like maybe a lot of people probably think Ghostbusters 2 was an unnecessary sequel. Yeah, like I, it, thought, I, I love Ghostbusters 2. Yeah. I, I There seems to be, like, a mixed response on that one. Um... But I I was scared to, scared to death of Vigo <laughs> when I was a kid, so I couldn't watch Ghostbusters two uh, till I was an adult. And by that time, I I just didn't. I mean, I watched it when I was a kid, and I tried my best to fast forward through the Vigo parts, but it would always get me. <laughs> well, I think a a prerequisite for a sequel that should not have been made. Um, I feel like. Usually, it would involve, like, a major casting change. So, like, Dumb and Dumber? Yeah. <laughs> I think that... I've, that yeah, could be I've up never, there. I've never seen that movie, you and I... Need to. I don't yeah. think you need to, to talk about movies that okay. shouldn't have been made. <laughs> because you can tell a lot just from watching a yeah. trailer sometimes. Oh, that, shit. Son of Mask? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, God. Another, <laughs> yep, there you go. I'm basically ripping off James Rolfe right now, but he basically said, you know, all the sequels to Jim Carrey movies that don't have Jim Carrey. <laughs> well, there's a Bruce Almighty, too. Yeah, uh, Evan Almighty. Evan Almighty, with, yeah. Uh, Steve Carell. Uh-huh. But I still didn't even bother watching it because, no. I don't know. Why? I just, like, why? Who cares? Bruce Almighty was a cute movie. Yeah. Why? Why do you need to go? Evan Almighty was like about Noah's Ark. He had to build Noah's Ark, yeah, yeah, and he kept growing a beard and turning into Noah, and he would shave it off and it'd grow back. Oh, they ripped that off from Santa Claus. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I was thinking that too. Santa Claus too. <laughs> that's a terrible <laughs> movie. <laughs> I used to love those movies. The I'm first one's awesome. Yeah, I love the first one. one. The yeah. second one is just god awful. The third one. Probably way worse. I don't think I ever saw it. I did. Martin yeah. Short is in the third one, and he plays Jack Frost. I think. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I Martin hate Martin Short's great. I I still love him to this day. I you don't really hear him. No. You know, you know, you don't hear that name very often these Martin days. Martin Short. He's not really doing much. I don't I, think he does a ton. I feel like he's kind of in the uh, Dana Carvey position. Yeah. He's super talented, super, you know, nice guy. I he I saw him on a late night talk show recently and I was like, "Oh shit, you know, Martin Short, he's alive and well. He looks great, too. He he doesn't look like he's, you know, aged that much. He um I'm sure he could still be busting out good comedies and starring in movies, but sometimes those guys just take a break, you know. Well, Someone who didn't age well from his era, <laughs> Chevy Chase. Yeah, the and that, poor Chevy Chase. And that makes me think of an, uh, a movie that I think probably should not have been made. And that is The Newest Vacation. The Newest Vacation? Oh, with uh, Ed Helms? Yeah. That's what you're talking about. I never saw it. I have no interest in watching it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's... No. I don't... Yeah, if it came... If it was on Netflix, do you ever do... What a waste of time this is! But do you ever just flip through Netflix and watch the first maybe ten minutes of a movie and just? I've like done that with when I'm trying it. to find something really awful, yeah. and I'm hoping it'll like blast out of the gate with you know <laughs> just hilarity so bad that it's just amazing. Yeah. But it usually doesn't work out, and I just waste ten yeah. fifteen minutes yeah. watching some shitty yeah. shitty movie. Ten yeah. to fifteen minutes that you'll never get back. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, that's, that's one that's like, is it a reboot? Is it a sequel? I think it's a sequel. Yeah, it's a Chevy sequel. Chevy, sequel. Chevy Chase is in it. Yeah. It's and Ed to be... Helms is rusty. Yeah. Why didn't they All get fucking, uh, what's his face, uh... Whoever played Rusty, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> all uh, like five actors that have played yeah, him. True. Well, the original You're one. You're thinking the original, yeah. Uh, God damn it. I know, I... He's in the Dark Knight. He's the reporter who gets kidnapped. Is it Anthony Michael is Hall? Is that no. His name? Yeah, yeah. No. Well, maybe, but he's not That's the reporter his... in Dark Knight. Yes, he, he is. Yeah, he is. Anthony Michael Hall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
He's he's the not the one that gets he's not captured. Re- he's not he's not a reporter. Yeah, he's he, like he a has talk the talk show. show host. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're and right. He does right. he does get captured. Yeah, no, yeah, they no, should have the uh, the guy that exposes uh, that's on the talk show to expose that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Yeah, gets ransomed and they have him in the car and mm-hmm. they're driving him around and someone because everyone wants to kill yeah. him. Yeah. Right. But that guy who runs the talk show <laughs> eventually gets captured by the Joker and he's reading he's reading like the different pieces of paper and just like throwing them and stuff and it's after the Coleman Reese thing. You don't have to rewatch it. Yeah, it's I've been seen a while. it five hundred times. It's so, so good. It, it is, is good. very, very long but it's but it's a, worth it. Oh man, it's probably one of my all-time favorite movies. Yeah, is The Dark Knight. I it, love that movie. Something strange about it is every time I watch it, I feel like it's different. Hmm. Is that weird? Maybe you notice new things about it. It, yeah. it might be. I, I just feel like I. It, it's not necessarily a different perspective. It's just like some scene is in there, and I don't quite remember the yeah. dialogue a hundred percent. And it's like I'm hearing it for the first time. It's just a magical kind of movie it's like a it's like the godfather or something it's just great <laughs> yep. fantastic sequel how would you feel about a feature in in the future a future feature <laughs> <clears throat> where your uh, your blu-ray player is hooked up to the internet mm-hmm. as it is now but right. they will uh without warning inject new scenes and take out <laughs> some old ones just so when you're watching up your old movies, yeah, I don't see any problem with that. Maybe honestly. you could, maybe could, there could be like an option when you go to play the movie. It's like play theatrical, play uncut, play refreshed, <laughs> and it's like, uh, it's like you hear, oh, there's a refreshed version of uh, of Dark Knight, yeah, and uh, but everyone's might be different, yeah. They just kind of throw some new stuff in and maybe take some scenes out. And uh... right when you said that, um, what came to mind was like a dragon's lair type thing. Where yeah, you decide where the movie goes. I mean, think of how it would be very labor intensive to film all those scenes and all the possibilities and everything. But if they can do it with Mass Effect, you know, do it with a game that can have a billion different outcomes, you know. Well, that's debatable, but it's kind of a very existential kind of ending. But, um, but yeah, like, you know, which characters live and die, who gets sent where, you know, if you had that kind of control over your entertainment. Um, that's why I think the, the line between video games and movies is, is going to eventually just blur together. Because you have your games that are... Kind of like, uh, I haven't played it yet, but uh, the game you let me borrow, Nick, uh, Until, Until Dawn. Dawn I was going to mention that. It's sort of like, I wouldn't, it, it's very, very cinematic. Yes. And, but you're still somewhat in control of the, the outcome of the game, so, well, you are in control, so. Yeah. But it's, you know. but it's in a limited capacity, like, there's yeah. still not a whole lot you can do. Mm-hmm. A lot of it's, like, button prompts and, and things like that, so it's... I mean, it's until dawn right now is the closest you're going to get to watching a movie, but being in control of what happens. Right. It's amazing. I yeah. love until. Dawn. Yeah. I think they tried to do that a little bit with the Sega CD console, like with point and click games, where you would, where there'd be literally live actors on yeah. the screen yeah. and you're deciding where they walk and stuff. Just a more rudimentary version. Speaking of which, I heard that they were. Uh... They're working on a follow-up to Until Dawn. I want one. I want one for real, yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's going to be the exact same, but... I wouldn't yeah. be... I I wouldn't be mad, like, either way. Like, if yeah. they continued the story, like, in classic horror sequel fashion, I would love it if Until Dawn 2 focused on the military going up the mountain to try to figure out what happened because that's like everyone's response yeah in a, in a sequel horror movie is like you fucking the second one's about setting in the military like hills have eyes too <laughs> it's just about a squad that's like 
in the hills trying to like do stuff and then they all get slaughtered by the fucking freaks <laughs> <laughs> or i would like it if they uh just did something completely different like a halloween three yeah approach. yeah and it was just they came up with a anthology series that just fell underneath until dawn yeah like detective mm-hmm. yeah yeah any yeah. like either way they went with it i'd be happy because mm-hmm. it's hard to mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. can't really bring back a lot of those characters because not everyone had the same character survive yeah so well yeah, yeah. that's your mass effect dilemma yeah where... I, I still don't quite grasp how Mass Effect Andromeda is going to take place after Mass Effect 3. It, it's, it's, <laughs> I'm interested to see how they explain where they've gotten to from where they were. It's going to be really cool to see, but, because there's, you know, there's several different outcomes that you can reach, and each one... There's no way that you can marry them all together into one canon ending. Right. It's just not possible because they're so vastly contradictory to each other. So, you know, it's interesting. That's another sequel, Mass Effect Andromeda. Not out yet, but uh, fucking A. That's cool. (laughs) Mass Effect coming up. Yeah. That's a reason to live. Also, new Star Wars coming out all the time, you know. Uh, although the new, the episode eight got delayed. Yeah. If you guys, I'm sure, yeah, you already knew, but uh, just another six months, so you know, you'll get your. I prefer eight. that time of the year. I, yeah. I prefer it coming out around the holidays. Yeah. yeah. It's like that a Christmas cool. present. Yeah. That yeah. way. And it's not having to fight in the box office against fucking stupid Michael Bay movies and yeah. shit. Like it'll, it'll just dominate and you know run the gamut again. Run the run the table, make a billion, make two billion dollars. Force still, Awakens made two billion. Yeah, yeah. Still waiting on a another weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna mention weekend at Bernie's too earlier. I think that might be the most unnecessary sequel. <laughs> But probably the greatest unnecessary sequel ever made. If you haven't seen the Weekend at Bernie's movies, I mean, the first one is just an 80s gem. Yeah, classic. Yeah. Classic movie. And the second one... To the point where we thought about doing an entire podcast <clears throat> episode about Weekend at Bernie's. I think we, sh- we should do it at some Still point. Still could happen. Yeah. Yeah. We could do both of them next week. We could. We could do the Weekend at Bernie's universe, as I <laughs> mentioned before. So, <laughs> I don't know if that really explains outside of the two movies. I don't think there's been any uh, graphic novels. <laughs> <laughs> that was just in my mind. I was, I was right on the same train of thought, because I was thinking Galaxy Quest, because that movie has a graphic novel that continues the story. Because um, I know they were trying... They were... The, the makers of the first one were, were going to try to make a cinematic sequel, but for whatever reason, they couldn't get the original cast all together and stuff, so there's your graphic novel, your Fight Club 2, your Galaxy Quest uh, mm-hmm. continuation. Yeah, uh, your Weekend at Bernie's weekend continuation. Weekend at Bernie's <laughs> graphic novel. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus H. Christ. Starring Andrew McCarthy and... <laughs> Jonathan Silverman. What if it was written by Andrew McCarthy and Jonathan Silverman? That'd be really cool. Yeah. I'd read it. Yeah, me too. Or Or maybe written by Terry Kaiser. See what he thinks Bernie should be up to. (laughs) If you haven't seen it, uh, Weekend at Bernie's is is a black comedy about uh, a guy who dies. It's not really a spoiler. That's like the premise premise. of the movie. (laughs) It would have been in the trailer if you saw it. Definitely in the trailer. Uh, Bernie Lomax dies within the first probably 10 to 15 minutes of the movie. And then the rest of the movie is uh, the main character is running around with a dead guy with sunglasses on. Well, I f- <laughs> <laughs> the, the two guys, Andrew McCarthy and Jonathan Silverman, who is uh, Sarah Silverman's brother, if you didn't know that. 
I did, because uh, yeah. you told me. Yeah. <laughs> Several years ago. <laughs> Bernie Lomax, played by Terry Kaiser, is their boss. <laughs> and uh, they uncover a company secret. Yeah. And so uh, He's they been bring it to him. the numbers. Yeah. They bring the <laughs> secret to him. They think they've done something good, and it turns out that he was actually in on it. Yeah. So in, a, in a, an effort to snuff them out, he invites them to his beach house for the weekend. <laughs> and they don't know. They they think that uh, they're being honored for their, their job well done. But he's inviting them there to have a hitman kill them. Yeah. 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 So he deserves to die. He does. Basically. He was going to kill them. <laughs> right. So that's why... But he it ends works. up getting killed first, right? <laughs> by his dudes yeah. who think he needs to be taken care of. Yeah, because he's getting sloppy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when they That's show when your life ends when you start to get sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> they show up to the house, this beach house. It's an amazing house, by the way. Oh man, God! If I could live in that house, good lord, I would just like to vacation there for yeah. a few days. That'd be awesome. Oh man, yeah, so cool. Anyway, they show up. Bernie's dead. <laughs> they want a party for the weekend. So they figure the best way to do that is just to act like he's still alive. <laughs> Have you guys seen Weekend at Bernie? And they just Are kinda, you loving this concept? Though? I know what it's about. They yeah. just kind of they kind of carry him around all weekend. Yeah, and fudge it. Yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's they a, sit him on the couch for quite a while, and there's like a party, and people are coming up and talking to him, and he just looks very disinterested. Yeah, it's kind of implied that Bernie is a he's a party he's a, boy. He's a party boy, so everybody either thinks he's drunk or passed out or like high on some like mescaline or something. So they all just oh, Bernie. And then his head will fall forward, and the people think he's nodding yes. <laughs> <and stuff. laughs> Very dark, dark movie. But when you're a kid, you're not thinking about. It. You just think it's funny because yeah. you're not like the man's dead. <laughs> you just never once. You're not wondering him. why there's no dead body smell or like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whether Bernie shit himself when he died. <laughs> you know? But to. Uh, to make it even better, there is a sequel to this movie. <laughs> he's, dead. he's dead in the first one. There involves, uh, he's in the second one. The second, but see, the first Bernie's movie. He's in the second movie. I feel he's like we're been dead since the first movie began. If we want to do a podcast, we're ruining <laughs> yeah. I know, the possibility. Now it's, the, now it's the weekend at Bernie's podcast. There is a sequel, and maybe we'll leave it there. Yeah. We can talk about it more if we decide to do a Weekend at Bernie's theme podcast. <laughs> I just got to... You just got to think what a good sport Terry Kaiser was to come back for that fucking sequel. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, all right, Terry. You're playing Bernie again. Guess what? He's still dead. <laughs> well, I mean, he's... He at least walks around on his own in the sequel. <laughs> Are you intrigued now? Yeah. <laughs> to do some physical comedy <laughs> that wasn't possible in the first one. Yeah. 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 Weekend at Bernie's too. I, I will defend that movie until the day I die. It's yeah. a good movie. Don't care. It probably has like a four percent on Rotten Tomatoes. D but it's uh, not all about the critic. Reception. I don't feel like Dale or. You got Dale and Bender are not getting in here because you haven't seen the movie. I want to. Not. <laughs> what's uh? Is there a, a sequel that you guys like that maybe you feel you're in the minority? Most people think it's shit, but you have a that's soft a spot idea. for it in your heart. That's a good idea. Like people, something that's maybe universally either not. It doesn't necessarily have to be hated, but maybe it's just other people consider it. Pointless and you think stupid. it either. Yeah. <laughs> that, that movie was stupid. Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. Most people will not defend that movie. <laughs> yeah. I like it a lot. Um, not, I wouldn't say that I like it more than the first, mm -hmm. but uh, like, my, I'm under the impression, and what I think a lot of people get pissed about, is that the whole like purpose and reason for him making Halloween 2 
was to put his Rob Zombie spin on Michael Myers' character, mm-hmm. like, and the story. Yeah. So, when he announced it, I think a lot of people were expecting a very, <laughs> a more brutal yet true-to-form remake of the original Halloween 2, and what he gave them was, like, this movie full of asshole characters who, like, all hate each other, and, like, <laughs> then just, you know, Halloween parties and stuff, and then, like, a really kind of scraggly Michael who like sees visions of his mom and that's why he kills people mm-hmm. but, and like when you just take into account his, the other movies that he made it's just awesome because he just slapped his name on it and put his style on it and his spin on it and I love everything else he's done so like why wouldn't I like it yeah. it's, it's awesome I like seeing <clears throat> I've never had the chance to ask any of the actors this because I've met most of the people that have been in both movies, but I've always wanted to ask them like what it was like to play like like Laurie Strode for example, Scout yeah. Compton. He's very innocent, you know, in the first one, just like Jamie Lee Curtis, and then in Rob Zombie's Halloween too, she's like a total goth chick punk asshole that works at like a record shop and yeah. you know she's been through this very traumatic thing and she just like fucking hates everybody and yeah like it like it's it's cool to see that that change in character like mm-hmm. i've always wanted to be like oh which did you like playing or what was it like to get into character for those two different things yeah i, I does thought does it feel like a direct sequel or does it feel it's <clears throat> it's direct yeah, yeah and it, direct it, it felt like it followed the first one to me you yeah. know it's not yeah. like where did that come from it was it felt like a rob zombie movie yeah but in the halloween universe yeah which yeah because i thought I, was pretty cool i saw the first um halloween the rob first rob zombie halloween and it was sort of like a straightforward yeah movie so it's interesting that he established the franchise with okay i can do a regular you know sort of more of an homage with a uh, maybe a more visual rob zombie style but still kind of straightforward and then use the sequel to branch out that's pretty cool that's what i think they're gonna do with uh the new star wars franchise not to continually bring it up but <laughs> no i, think I they agree. reestablish I think yeah. the series with something that's very much a soft reboot of A New Hope, and then they're gonna completely just go crazy with the next one. It's gonna be wild. What's the sequel that you love, Dale? Um, That maybe other people don't love. Hmm. Um, gosh. Uh, Well, I brought it up last week. Uh, I I really enjoy Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Um, Most people probably not gonna say that's their favorite out of the three of them, but, uh, you don't think? T2 is considered like... one of the best sequels ever made, I think. You think? Yeah. Oh, it's, well. It's often, yeah, considered sort of like Godfather Part 2. A lot yeah. of people think that's mm-hmm. superior to the first one. Yeah. People think T2 is the one. The uh, I think we brought that up on one of the other podcasts. It was, um, I think when we established the sequels yeah. thing, we <laughs> started talking about yeah. seconds of movies. and I, I, I was I talking really about how one. the... I was talking about how the original Terminator was so awesome, you know, an 80s noir and stuff. and So good. T2's more of a straight-up action movie. Yeah. What did you think of uh, Part 3? Um, th- that one was unnecessary. Well, yeah. <laughs> that one was the <laughs> unnecessary one. It, it was, I mean, it still had some cool parts. I remember that came out when I was probably like 12 or 13 or something like that, and I remember seeing it with my dad. Which is, my dad doesn't go to the movies, but he wanted to go see that one kind of thing. Yeah. And I remember there's some really cool parts in mm-hmm. that, but that movie overall was kind of a wash. And I, I, I don't think it had high expectations <laughs> for most people, but yeah. 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 I, I didn't hate T3, yeah, I but I haven't seen it, it as, an, as a full grown adult. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> It, uh, again, there's cool parts throughout. Yeah. There's really, really cool sequences. But did anyone here see Genesis? No, 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 no. <laughs> I unnecessary. Yeah, yeah. I uh... well, it was supposed to reestablish their entire 
Terminator universe, yeah, right? It was like a reset of and it everything. Just flopped completely. Yeah. And it's it's and sad now, cuz now Terminator's done. Uh you've probably seen the last <laughs> of the Terminator and It's sad cuz I know they had s- sequels to Genesis planned, so but I don't know who's going to throw had, in for it at this point. <laughs> I'm sure they had sequels to Dracula Untold planned as well but well they're trying they're still trying to do that whole monster universe they got dracula untold and then um i think picture frankenstein yeah and then apparently tom cruise is going to star in the remake of the mummy what (laughs) they're trying and they're trying really they're trying to bring back all the universal monsters and they want to create a coherent universe with all the monsters (laughs) Yeah, I, I knew about that, and I, I thought it was supposed to... I think it it was supposed to start with Dracula Untold. Yeah. And that was going to be, like, the one that breaks in, like, the Iron Man of the... Fr- of the you know, <coughs> it just fucking flopped. And it just... <laughs> Sorry. Apparently, I mean, it looked awful. Yeah. In the in the I don't really... Previews. I don't really get... I'm not really... As much as I love horror, I'm not on board with, like, a, a coherent universal monster cinematic universe like anything if done well i'll welcome it but i'd like to see them expand the uh godzilla universe that would be awesome off of the the newest movie that they made yeah Yeah. well the the sequel to godzilla is gonna have it's gonna be a monster mash basically you're gonna get mothra rodan and Ghidorah. so They've already announced it. It's not like a leak or anything. It's just like I heard okay. they're doing a new uh, Gamera movie. Really? Yeah. <laughs> just amazing. They are doing. Toho is making a new Godzilla yeah. movie too. Mm-hmm. Um, nice. With the rubber suit and everything. Mm-hmm. I what I saw the like leaked screenshots of that and it didn't look all that impressive. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. I'd give it a shot, though. I'm not going to judge a book by its cover, you know? So, T2, you like. It's one of your sequels. Um, Do you think Anchorman 2 was necessary? No. No. Yeah. I never saw it. I've heard it's essentially, like, it's just the same exact movie. It is. It's the same. They just rehash the same jokes, and they... They, they they sing in that one as yeah. well, a different song, but they, they also sing. But It's like yeah, a it's, nostalgia throwback to the first one. Yeah, that, they, that came out a couple like, years later. <laughs> yeah, it was like, it's, yeah. it's one of those, like, I, Anchorman was like, it's, it's my favorite Will Ferrell movie. I love that movie. And then for them to go at it again, it just kind of, almost it didn't ruin the first one, but it like leaves it. Just, it. Like, bitter taste in your mouth like ugh why do they just yeah. leave it do you think that's gonna just... happen with Zoolander 2 coming out I hope not I don't Probably. know <laughs> I, I feel like honestly, there might people beg for sequels and then when they yeah happen, but there's been want. such a long gap in between the two mm-hmm. I feel like that might be in in its favor I think um, there was I think there was almost 10 years between the two Anchorman movies no feels... couldn't have been 10 the first years. Anchorman no was from 2004 and the Anchorman two came out fairly recently. I mean, it feels like it's bargain bin old old fashioned now, but it's not been that long since Anchorman two came out. I think it was twenty fourteen. I kind of feel like back on Zoolander though, the the very little bit that I know about the sequel, it kind of seems like they're gonna go the whole like social or like social commentary route with the movie where they're going to like rip on current events and current celebrities and things mm-hmm. which I kind of I don't know I just, sometimes that's good but it can also really date your movie to a very particular time yeah, yeah. So, so like then, it, like 5 years from now is not going to be funny anymore yeah, because maybe people who were too young to get those jokes, watch it in five years, and they don't even know what the references right. are, you know, and that kind of thing. Yeah. Why it's funny that Justin Bieber's in it. Like, yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, like, kinda, I kind of feel like at this point, Zoolander 2 is unnecessary. Yeah. 
I mean, it's funny that they're making it, and it's it's good to see the cast back together and everything. Yeah. But I'm I'm kind of skeptical on it. I think it's it could be good. <laughs> it could you know. I like to give everything a chance, so I, I don't want to jump out there and say boo-hoo on Zoolander 2. It could be great. It could be uh, better than the original. You never know. Yeah. Well, uh, to jump the gun a little bit, <laughs> another movie that comes out right along with Zoolander 2 is Deadpool. Oh, man. Will uh, will there be a Deadpool great. sequel, do you guys think? Be, I'm sure there will. Yeah. As long as... Uh, <laughs> with the I just think they're doing everything right with the marketing like it's it's just got people so jacked up and excited for that movie just seeing that character everywhere yeah and, uh, it's just such a pleasing and you know wonderful character you know calms you down makes you laugh you know it's uh <clears throat> I'm glad they didn't sacrifice the style of humor yeah to like you know go for pg-13 or something it's because all sexual humor yeah <laughs> <laughs> all of it. Yeah. every promo that comes out with ryan reynolds playing deadpool has something about sex two like, girls one punch yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> at the when the trailer ends there's like this picture in picture and the background is him holding a a pistol between his legs and it says wait till you get a load of me <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's just have you seen the where he uh talks about testicular cancer yeah he has that a promo good. video where he explains like how to touch yourself to feel for <laughs> testicular cancer and the whole time he's like so go home tonight and just grab a big old handful of those balls like <laughs> i think there's another one for breast cancer and then like there's a promo out where he dreams that he, like, kisses some English soccer player. Yeah. And he, like, yeah. wakes up and he's like, I had that dream again. And he's got, like, a uh, Wolverine <laughs> and, you know, action figure with him. And he just, like, falls back asleep. I love the Colossus that they came yeah. up with for that movie. Well, it's he's dead on the original. Absolutely like, perfect. It's funny how that works when you just follow the comics <laughs> <laughs> when you get the X-Men characters apocalypse <clears throat> jesus it's like they i i don't understand why they go away from the comics a lot of times yeah. because mm-hmm. i know you want to whatever update shit and like <clears throat> expand the uh the appeal but i feel like when you have a rabid fan base that's mm-hmm. already just wild about something and yeah. all you have to do is translate it into another media <laughs> form, yeah. then it's it's simple. I mean, can you imagine get... can you imagine if all of the X Men movies, if they had their like X Men ninety two costumes throughout yeah. the whole movies? Yeah. Like I don't care how ridiculous those costumes look. Those well, they had to, would like, have been amazing. Well they poked fun at the original costumes yeah. if I don't know if you remember yeah. that. Mm-hmm. I think says so. something about in the first X Men they did yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah because they said something he Wolverine comments on the costumes and somebody says like what would you prefer like yellow spandex or something oh, something yeah I don't know if yeah. I I, I know that wearing, line like, and I don't know if I've ever put two and two <laughs> together black leather yeah because everything in the nineties and early two thousands yeah. was the Matrix yeah after <laughs> the Matrix came out. <laughs> Lots what? of whatever 2000 yeah. going uh, on at that point. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> Godzilla 2000. Yeah. Dracula 2000. <laughs> Was that the one with Bon Jovi? No. <laughs> Dracula 2000. Uh, Gerard Butler plays Dracula, I oh. think. What? Yeah. Gerard Butler. Just like Triple H in. was in Blade Trinity. <laughs> yeah. That's a sequel. <laughs> yeah. I love the Blade movies. Did he play like Blade Two? Anyone is, in that? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen Blade Trinity. I just know Triple H was in it. I That's think it. what I don't know what the ending was, but it should have ended with him giving Blade the pedigree. <laughs> the movie. Ends yeah. On that. I think he was a bad guy. I know. Triple yeah. H wins. Yeah. Triple H goes over Blade <laughs> in, Blade's movie. in Blade's own movie. <laughs> The end, of, the end of Blade 3 is him fighting Dracula. Oh. 
That's and cool. it's the guy from Prison Break. Uh, the brother that they break out. I've only watched Prison Break. Yeah, that's like the, the only... one or the, the heavier the one? The heavier one. Okay. The buff guy. Gotcha. Yeah, he's Dracula cool. in that movie. Nice. And uh, Ryan Reynolds is in that too. Yeah, and that's he's right. hilarious. Absolutely yeah. hilarious. When he gets captured by the vampires and they're like all up in his face and he's they're trying to get information out of him and he goes... I just farted, and I had a lot of garlic today. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a great alternative in Monster Squad if uh, if Horace would have just <laughs> blew ass, and it was high enough in garlic content to burn <laughs> Dracula's face. <laughs> <It's> just, ah! <laughs> That would be a good scene. Yeah. Maybe that could be in the uh, the refresh version. Yeah. Oh, man, that would be great. Did we talk about that, too, how Monster Squad could use a reboot? Yeah, new... I think we did discuss that at some point. For the new millennium? Yeah. <laughs> we did. I think because we was. talked about the different ways you could do it. We talked about it on the Monster Squad podcast. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. You can't talk about that the again. The millennium's a... The new millennium's a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the sequel of Yeah, life. the first millennium was zero to a thousand. The second millennium was one thousand to nineteen ninety nine and then now we're in the third. Or zero to nine ninety nine? Is that what you would count? The first So what we're about, in the third millennium right now. What about before well, that's BC. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so like, why, that doesn't matter. count. I'm wondering why we. Why isn't the BC is 500 years old now? Well, I know, but and I just. Flat. I wonder, like, as far as like our timeline, when we're talking about years, <laughs> why everything BC is just like not canon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so many fucking like the most important parts of human evolution happen in BC. Yeah, like, the reason we are who we are. In so many years. Like, why don't we just come to an estimate on how old the universe is and then say we're in that year? Yeah. Well, scientists believe the universe is uh, approximately 13.8 billion years old. Yeah. So everything... Everything... Uh, so we have 13.8... Or thirteen point seven nine 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 billion years is all BC, <laughs> and then the last two thousand years is the only part we give a shit about. <laughs> like that's not short sighted. No, no. <laughs> I think that's that is a, a flaw in our evolution. Really, is being short sighted and not being able to see the big picture. No, but we do. We know the big picture. It's like we're talking right. about it right now. We're just ignoring it. Yeah. If we could come up with a symbol for billion yeah. and just write that. It would be like 13 yeah. symbol and then whatever. You know, yeah. you want to add something to make it easier to right. keep track of the year after that. But mm -hmm. I don't know. It just seems... I think we'll get our shit together. Maybe. I'm, I'm optimistic for the future. That would be more impressive when saying what year it was, Hell too. yeah, it would. What year is it? 13, 13 billion? Point, yeah, 8. <laughs> I think the problem is the 13.8 billion is an approximation. So well, that's what I'm to... saying. We just come up with, we're going to go with something here. And it's yeah. in the billions, not the thousands. <laughs> I don't know. Some people think the universe itself is a sequel. Yeah, um, I know that. Big crunch. Yeah. So the universe expands to a point where it just snaps back like a giant rubber band and crunches back in on itself. Mm -hmm. And then the big it crumbles and becomes that one point that starts yeah. the big bang all over again. So it's like a big breath. Yeah. In and out and then it's just a giant lung inside a turtle. What if there are people a cosmic turtle? <laughs> <laughs> What if there are people watching? I'm always funny. I gotta mention. Sorry. There could be people watching our universe unfold time and time again. Yeah. I wonder what they would think of this sequel that's happening right now. <laughs> well, it would always come out different, so it wouldn't be boring. Well, yeah, but you'd maybe, you'd have favorites. <laughs> yeah. 
you probably have favorites like you know yeah. god the last five have been fucking awful <laughs> <laughs> it's like survivor like the first couple seasons were watchable but man they really need to pick their shit shit back up sometimes it's like the exact same except for one guy wore a different color shirt on one day <laughs> everything else unfolded exactly the same so. <laughs> oh man I've seen all this fucking shit before <laughs> this is this a rerun? No, no no that guy's shirt was green last time well, what oh. else is different? one time <laughs> like our head is attached to the tip of our penis <laughs> and that's the only difference <laughs> like the... <laughs> that's literal head so when Lincoln so was assassinated, John Wilkes Booth shot reached his dick over. Off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You. But wear. first, he had to flop his own head like across <laughs> his leg to make sure he got a good shot. <laughs> How would that work? It's Rick and Morty type shit. He has man. to walk up from behind him in the theater and like pull his dick out. What? Well, I guess it would be out. out. The dicks yeah. are out. The dicks are out. Okay. Yeah. So like, but you'd have to, like, get hard first to, so, like, be able to look to see where you're going, I guess. No, you'd stay soft so you can just, like, bend it around the corner, like, yeah. you know. Well, you'd always have to be holding it. Is. Well, if you needed two hands, you'd have to be hard yeah. or else it'd just be flopping and then... Or there'd pro- no, there'd be an apparatus, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. People would wear, like, a girdle with a little <laughs> adapter... And it, like holds it's your sickening how much our minds connect. <laughs> Everybody would have belly button rings, <laughs> and, and you tie it. You'd have a like a a coos, uh, like a nest that it would lay in. You know, yeah. like a cot. A and cot. Then, uh, a a cot. <laughs> well, yeah, we're talking about a sequel to the universe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'd have a cot cot. Yeah, and you tie a little string to your belly button ring so it'd hold it up. You know, you'd have, yeah. Like, or you could have a chain. And yeah, be a really chain. Edgy. Like I mean, gothic. they'd all they'd be all different kinds to yeah. express yourself, right? You know, <laughs> piece, I, piece of floss. <laughs> well, I feel like now, like if we were living in that universe right now, mm-hmm. uh, there would be like exoskeletons being made that would oh, allow, yeah. you know, you, you'd be able to control your penis and have it. <laughs> Sort of look around you without just needing carry to around like a PS4 controller and just move your dick around <laughs> with your hands. And your 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 sight would always be at dick level, though. That's why evolution probably didn't fuck with that. It's like, well, from down here, I can't really see the threats that are coming at me. Well, know? think about any movie now where a, a characters like had their head cut off because yeah. a cannon was blasted or something, and the cannonball <laughs> yeah. took their dome off. That's that right, wouldn't yeah. happen. It would go wouldn't right over a, top now. Wouldn't have a head up there. Yeah. <laughs> so a pair like, of whoa. arms. And a, Anyone who'd so ever died you, by getting shot in this region where your head is now, they'd be alive. They'd re- at this you point. Wouldn't, I don't think they'd be aiming for that anymore in the other universe, though. They wouldn't be like, oh, there's probably a head there. They would visually see... That there's no head on your shoulders, and they'd aim well, maybe, lower. No, maybe that's just where it happened to go. If you're shooting a cannon at someone from across the battlefield, oh, okay. you so know, you're saying it's just yeah. luck. Yeah, okay. luck Probably. will draw. You know, there would be no head there if, if all else was the same. And then I think that happens in the movie Glory. It happens in uh, Saving or in Saving Ryan. Uh, Patriot, I think. Uh, Dennis Hopper wouldn't have died in Speed. <laughs> <laughs> you just would have flipped around and uh, <laughs> see your head's at the tip of your penis, yeah. and your penis still functions as your penis. <laughs> yeah, so sex would be giving head. That, uh, yeah, it'd be shoving your head inside the woman's vagina. Well, there'd have to be an apparatus for that, too, or a device, your... like a snorkel type, <laughs> <laughs> like a cock snorkel. Yeah. Well, if you if you wanted to get her pregnant, you'd have to be unprotected, and you would just vomit up. Oh my god! I feel so bad, but I feel like we need to show these. Guys. I'm not 
looking at it. I think have I you seen the Gary Busey? Yeah. Did you show it to me? I might have been the one. That, yeah, I might have shown you that. I don't... <laughs> this is what we're like. It's the best Photoshop job of all time, I think. <laughs> This is oh, what man. this is what we're like when we have no structure on a podcast. <laughs> yeah. We're just like, hey, you want to talk about sequels? Yeah, all right. So your head's on your penis now. <laughs> In a sequel, sequel to, to the, the universe. universe. <laughs> your face is just on your dick. <laughs> how, how would the world of boxing be different? Everybody just going for nut shots. <laughs> 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 for a knockout you just have to punch him in the dick really hard just... yeah but I'm gonna about beat your dick off the perspective that came up when we were talking about that a minute ago was that um, that would be normal in that universe they wouldn't yeah. question it it'd just be my head's on my dick and then if they visited our <laughs> universe we would be dickheads yeah. <laughs> they'd be like why is your why is your head all the way up there, you fucking weirdos? It goes down between your legs. Yeah. What are you doing? What's your dick doing? It's got no head on it. It's, it's got like, like this dead head there. <laughs> that head what? doesn't do anything. What is that? Just like a bell shaped something or other just it's hanging a out? Piece of meat. There's no neurons flying around there. <laughs> fucking dumbass. <laughs> I'm talking about penises start, for like ten minutes. Yeah. Dickhead wars. <laughs> they just start. Maybe we can do. We, we can get really controversial. We'll just do a penis show <laughs> next week. <laughs> penis. This is danger. This borderlines on a penis show and string theory and like yeah. all kinds of cosmic. The penis shit. program. Yeah. All right. Maybe we should. <clears throat> Talk about sequels again. Yeah. Um, what about sequels to albums? Do you think there's any really good ones that yeah. outshine the original? Um, well, outshine. Oh, I don't know. I was just going to say that, that I, I that drawing of Rob Zombie I did was from mm -hmm. Hellbilly Deluxe Part Two. Ah, yeah. The cover of that album. I don't know that Can I you remember the subtitle all the way of the the new the one. Ah, yeah. oh, no, I, I can't. <laughs> Something awesome. Yeah. yeah it's <laughs> fucking wild, man. Have that, you ever listened? That drawing is fucking amazing. By Thank the you. Way. It yeah. took like four hours. So <laughs> <laughs> that's why I, I wrote on the caption, like, don't expect this all the time because I don't have that long to you draw. You went a little more simple with your Rhodes one, too, but I. Or not two, but yeah. you went back to your simple style, but I really yeah. like the Rhodes one, too. Thank that's you. It's one of my favorites. I post drawings on our Instagram yeah, every day. That's not sequel not, related, but just in case you want to check it out. Each drawing is a sequel to the previous one, maybe. Yeah, that's right. What about uh, Coheed's a big sequels band? But um, yeah, their their newest album was the first one that didn't fall into the storyline. Yeah, so that that's not a sequel. Can't right. talk about it right now, but <laughs> <laughs> I said too much. Most of their albums have been sequels, though, <clears throat> yeah. or prequels. I don't know that I per, like particularly listen to any sequel albums. The only, mm -hmm. the only band I can think yeah. of off the top of my head is Billy Talent has Billy Talent, and then two and three. Uh, Led Zeppelin, well, yeah. one, two, and three. Yeah. Yep. Maylene and the Sons of Disaster. If you guys have heard of that band, three, yeah. yeah, I think I think they they have four now. Really, I'm pretty sure that one's the four isn't. Yeah, eh. <laughs> but they, they the got one, a, two, and three. I'm in. They got a little cock rocky. Yeah, for some yeah, reason. Which that fourth album kind of kind of pissed me off because that first song I loved and mm -hmm. it was like it's like okay they're still doing what they need to do and then the second song came I was like uh what yeah you no know? and the you know and the the rest of the album was. No, no good. But one, two, and three, I'm in. I I loved those albums. Bob, have you ever listened to uh, Hellbilly Deluxe Part Two? No, I haven't. You should. Yes, you I love should. the first song is uh, <clears throat> Jesus Frankenstein. It's amazing. I love Rob Zombie. <laughs> I saw him at um, at Riverbend last summer, and oh, it was. Cool. Awesome! Show. I'd like to go he see is, him again. I yeah, saw him when he was great. touring for uh, the Sinister Urge. Okay, back when that came out. Yeah, but 
Yeah, I'd like to see him again. Yeah, he puts on a really fun show, and he's got some moves. He's like 50 now, mm-hmm. and he's running around like he's a young 30-year-old. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> he's really good live. I think uh, Rob Zombie crafted one of the best sequels of all time in The Devil's Rejects. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That movie The is... best use of Freebird ever. Oh, yeah. Holy shit, yeah. Have you seen The Devil's Rejects, Bob? No. Oh, oh boy. Oh, God. It's good. Wow. If you t- House have of you... a Thousand Corpses, like, gave me nightmares. Okay, but so. take, like, take House <laughs> of a Thousand Corpses, and that's, like, his... I think his his portrayal or like his personification like he has a lot of crazy stuff you know and there's like the monsters at the, yeah. at the end and Dr. Satan and like it's just like this wild and crazy like acid trip of a scary movie yeah literally like strip all that stuff away and like pull um those just absolutely diabolical characters like into the real world yeah. and almost make like a crime drama. Yeah. It's not a, necessarily a horror movie. Yeah. It's more of like fugitive on the run. Yeah. Mm-hmm. movie and it's it's like it's brutal and it's gritty and it's it's told so well. Like it's far superior, I think. I mean, it's oh, hard yeah. to compare because yeah. they're they have a very different tone, but in my opinion, honestly, Devil's Rejects far superior to House of a Thousand Corpses. It is nice. an excellent movie. That's one you will need to watch. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get on that. All right. Dale, you've seen it, haven't you? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's been probably two years since I've seen it, but um, yeah, it's really, really good. I thoroughly enjoyed that one. I have to rewatch that one soon. Yeah. I like that a lot. Oh. It's almost like uh, it's it's as big of a difference to me as like New Hope to Empire. Wow. I think. Because yeah. it all exists in the same universe, but it's almost such a departure yeah. from what it was. Yeah. Even um, going back to watch, like you're saying, um, watching New Hope, it's a very self contained movie that kind of mm-hmm. wraps itself up as if there's not going to be a sequel. Right. And then Empire just kind of blows its ass away yeah. immediately within the first five minutes it's like a whole different ball game you know it makes A New Hope look like a, a student film mm-hmm. almost <laughs> even though A New Hope is great yeah I mean there's nothing wrong with it it's just it's a 70s movie and then it's like it's almost like it's it was made in 77 but it feels like it was made in the early 70s right and then empire feels like it was made in the mid 80s <laughs> when it was made in 1980 uh-huh. so it's it jumps way ahead of you know expectations i felt like if i would have seen that in theaters like if i would have seen all the star wars in order and seen empire like had the build up like oh Star Wars is getting a sequel guys you know it's called The Empire Strikes Back get all jacked up about it at school and then go see it I would have dude yeah <laughs> <laughs> just such a big leap forward what are uh what are some sequels uh you wish would be made still wish would be made Sequels are touchy. Yeah. That's interesting. It seems, for whatever reason, um, this doesn't really answer your question, but doesn't it seem like video game sequels are oftentimes way more successful than I was, movie that's, sequels? I, again, I was talking to Lindsay the other night, and that's a point that I brought up, is that of all the like different mediums out there that you can have a sequel to, yeah. I think video games like almost... 95% of the time, maybe 99% they of the time, the on. second one is always much better than the first. Yeah, yep. They take what... I think what they do is they make the first one. The first one's like... The first one's like a... a it's always a test cut run. diamond. Yeah. yeah, it's like... It's beautiful, but it's got its flaws. And then they basically shine it up and really get rid of the chaff and like the shit that didn't work with the first one and then boom they got their second one right you know it's like uh going from halo to halo 2 yeah you know or oh i don't even know 
I mean, I just finished Darksiders 2 mm-hmm. on PS4, and that was, you know, the first game was great, but then the second one is, like, much larger. Yeah. You know, there's a lot more to do. There's a lot mm-hmm. more side quests. There's a lot, you know, it's it's awesome. I think Assassin's Creed is one of the big ones for me, yeah. where the first one was cool in concept, and I remember being very jazzed up about it. Um, I think I was playing Elder <laughs> Scrolls Oblivion, mm. and I was telling my friend about uh, the Assassin's um, Guild in that movie, or in that game, um, and uh, he was like, oh dude, there's this game coming out where all you do is assassinate people. It's literally called Assassin's Creed, and I was like, holy shit. And I played it, and it was just so goddamn repetitive. Yeah. Like, the first one, it just misses the mark in a lot of spots but then when you play the second one man it ups the ante big time yeah it's a really really good game and it <laughs> totally they realized how monotonous the first one could get and they threw in a lot more variety and made it you know um easier to play through you know and i was thinking like i wonder what it is about because when you think of like movies and you make a sequel to a movie a lot of people they just want more of the same thing right you know and then when you don't get the same tone or the same whatever people get butthurt about movie sequels but like in games it's different in yeah you something you put out a video game and then people are always crying for like well you should have done this or you should have done that yeah, with movies, you're damned if you do and damned if you yeah. if you don't. Because we just talked about a sequel earlier, Anchorman 2, <laughs> where it kind of rehashes the first one, and people hate it. They're like, well, why don't we just have the first one? So you can play it safe and kind of do a redo and piss everybody off that way. Or you can <laughs> depart too much and piss everybody off. By but then... Every once in a while, though, you hit it because yeah. Evil Dead Two is pretty much Evil Dead, but way better. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what everybody says. I still haven't seen those movies. Though, oh so. man! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. And the that. newest Evil Dead yeah. was great, amazing. I'm so that. glad you liked that movie. Oh yeah, I yeah, loved I it. Felt, I was I like giddy. Leaving yeah, I was like, that was perfect. Yeah, I did it perfectly. There was a scene in that movie that I, I still, I'd like to get it tattooed at some point. Which one? When she's fucking just got the chainsaw. Oh, chainsaw and the... Yeah, yeah. and it's just like Mm -hmm. black and red Mm -hmm. pretty much on the screen. That would be fucking amazing. But, uh, yeah, that was great. I still haven't watched the show, the new one. Oh, Ash vs. the Evil Dead? Yeah. I want to. It looks fun. Has it been released? It's it's probably over by now. Mm. Yeah, I I think it premiered like on Halloween... Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, I recall correctly. So it's, it's probably over, so the DVD should be coming out soon. It's a pretty strong damn franchise, man. Mm-hmm. I and it's funny because I stood in a room and with my eyes and ears watched Bruce Campbell say he'll never play Ash ever again. <laughs> really? And then like six months later, they were like, "Ash for Evil Dead is coming to." Showtime and Bruce Campbell's in it. I'm like, I'm like, all right, whatever, man. Do you think the money was just right? <laughs> Do you think that's why he did? I it think, or? from from the, my very brief encounter with Bruce Campbell, I feel like he, the money might have been good, but he really probably did it for the fans. Yeah. I mean, so he seems like a he nice... seems he seems pretty genuine. Yeah. You think William Shatner will ever play Kirk again? <laughs> <laughs> they should just give him his own movie yeah, yeah. Captain Kirk <laughs> <laughs> that's just what it's called <laughs> or maybe it can be like Captain Kirk and the Star Trek <laughs> like he's making the Star Trek himself yeah it's just a fantastic voyage across the universe to uh find a new toupee shows his misadventures as he goes <laughs> along and wacky capers that ensue yeah what's wild is he is actually older than leonard nimoy it, believe it or not he's 84 leonard nimoy was 83 really? yeah will shatner is fucking old 
And he still, I mean, he doesn't look like an 84-year-old man at all. He just looks like William Shatner. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So, good on you, Will Shatner. Live long and prosper, motherfucker. <laughs> well, I was asking them, what are a sequel that uh, like you're still waiting for, or you wish would have been made? I wanted a Lebowski sequel. Yes, yeah. That's, yeah. I think they could have pulled that off if they would have gotten the entire cast. If you get the original cast back together, the Co- the Coens are on their A game. That's you could make a great Lebowski sequel. Mm-hmm. And it's not a shitty. You know, it's not a sequel to uh, a goofy comedy. Like yeah. Lebowski, it would have been a sequel, you know, with a purpose because the Coens are just fucking awesome. And just for selfish reasons, I would also like to see an Office Space sequel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it might be awful. Yeah, but I just I like, want more yeah. Lumberg. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> more Lumberg. <laughs> <laughs> I just I can't get enough. Right. <laughs> that movie is just it's such a classic that yeah. I feel like if you did it correctly, and I think Mike Judge would. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah. Lebowski and Office Space or two that I would love to see. Um, it's getting towards what? What's our time now? Oh, uh, we got about fifteen. Okay, I will. I'm gonna. This is Nick Bait. You've heard of clickbait? Yeah. Um, what would you say to people who assert that uh, Clerks Two is unnecessary? Hmm. I would assert that their opinion's unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> because we're also getting Clerks 3. Yeah. And Mole Rats 2. Yeah. So, I wouldn't add that one to the list, but it's happening. So, yeah. you know, that's... Mole Rats is my favorite Kevin Smith movie. And just... I never th- expected there would be another Mole Rats. <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> So that's the sequel you're glad is coming around. Oh, yeah. Really yeah. pumped about. But I, I enjoyed Clerks too. I think that uh, the first one is the superior film, mm-hmm. but I still liked it. I pretty much yeah. will enjoy anything Kevin Smith decides to put out. Why do you think he decided not to do Clerks 2 in black and white? Well, I know the only reason he did Clerks 1 in black and white was just money. Yeah. It was cheaper, so I don't think it was... <laughs> <laughs> like he, I don't think he was trying to necessarily go for any certain feel. It's just that's what he had money for, yeah. so he did it and made it work. It's just such a. I can't see that movie in color though. It's just yeah. so iconic as a black and white film. Yeah, I, I love it that way. But well, it's like you can watch a colorized version of the original Night of the Living Dead. Really, and yeah. I just prefer the black and white. Does the colorized version? Did they do a good job on it? I mean, yeah, it, it looks look, decent. Yeah. You know, it looks like a lot of those old films that they tried to update. I guess yeah. you know, but I think how the hell do you do that? Go frame by frame and just color everybody in? I mean, how does that work? I guess that's how you would have to do it. I mean, <laughs> if you filmed it in black and white, it's not like you can digitally put. Well, no, I think you. I think they somehow retouch it all digitally. I mean, because you can't fuck with the original film. Well, no, but they did that shit before digital was a thing. Yeah, they you know? they would colorize. Yeah, I don't know. Not very well, but they would do it. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting to think about. I'm sure it's a wonderful process. That uh, probably a lost art form, I would imagine. Yeah, no, a lot I'd of like imagine. stop motion. <laughs> not gonna get another. Uh, what is his name? Ray Harry, Harryhausen. Harryhausen, yeah. The f- the uh, Godfather of stop motion. Mm-hmm. But I think he learned from somebody else. He just became the best. There was a guy before him that that taught him. Who did? Um, but I think he did invent a lot of like models and standards yeah. within the stop motion right. like way of doing things. Ray Harryhausen, like. Yeah. Was the pioneer on a lot of that. He's the shit. Yeah. yeah. He will be, uh, hopefully remembered for a very long time. Remembered fondly. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, uh, Wade Boggs. 
That's why we're drinking in his memory. God rest his soul. <laughs> Wade, Wade Boggs, Boggs is, is alive. alive. <laughs> <laughs> he I, I, think I, Florida. I think I told you guys. He's uh, in his early 50s. <laughs> he lives in Tampa, Florida. <laughs> Wade Boggs was on an episode of Psych. Was he? Yeah. I think you have told us that before. When it, there was like a case that takes place at like a, a minor league uh, uh, stadium. Yeah. And Wade Boggs, I think, is like one of the administrators on the team. Uh, yeah. Makes sense that that's what he'd be doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's playing. Yeah. Yeah. In the midst of uh, an existential crisis, sports really are funny to look at. <laughs> it's like a bunch of dudes in uniforms just fucking trying to hit a ball or throw it to each other and you're sitting there worrying about like the cosmos. <laughs> Actually, when I, probably in the darkest days for me personally, mentally in my life, yeah, uh, the NBA Finals really helped me. Yeah, because that and wrestling. Wrestling. It was like if I could sit down and like it just boils life down to something simple as yeah. fuck. Something if you can That's... sit there and just pay attention to like an intense basketball game. Yeah. Or fucking, There's no room for your brain to wander about yeah. stupid and It's like, shit. oh, these guys are out doing that right now. Yeah. And they don't give okay. a shit. Yeah. Kobe <laughs> Bryant's not <laughs> contemplating his own death while he's <laughs> shooting a three-pointer. I yeah. mean, he's out there fucking trying to win a championship, you know? That's, that's inspiring, man. Boil it down to the simplest terms. Maybe, hey, I just thought of a, a topic for next week since we should probably figure that out soon. Yeah. What if we did uh, the worst athletes of all time? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Because he's not a bad athlete, but the first name that came to mind was Detlef Shrimp. <laughs> um, he has the worst athlete's name, I think, of all time. Yeah. He's not the worst athlete. Um, that's an interesting topic because worst athletes... It would be worst. It would have to be worst athletes in professional sports, who are not the worst. There's far worse than <laughs> if you make it to the professional level. Even if you're the worst. Well, I suppose you could just search on YouTube and find like some <laughs> shithead playing for like a minor league team somewhere in Nebraska. Just uh, I don't know. You gotta wonder why this team sticks with an armless <laughs> second baseman. <laughs> he, and he hasn't had a hit in ever, Jerry. In, in ever. ever. <laughs> it's like kicking dirt. He's got no arms. <laughs> uh, family Guy reference. Yeah, Sorry, guys. Right. Yeah, Bucky Lagrange. I think was the guy's name. <laughs> <laughs> if, if we do worst athletes, I know nothing. Yeah. No athletes at all. No, I don't. I do not follow sports. You never have. Slightest. No, never. Hmm. I like the idea of worst. I like going at worst. Worst of something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> it could just be uh, about the worst. Yeah, the worst. Let's talk about the worst of things. Just the worst. <laughs> what if it was brought worst though? The worst. The worst. Mm -hmm. The worst. 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 <laughs> I actually, yeah, I I did love brats. So I did too. Oh, yeah. I didn't when I was really young, and then I came to enjoy them later yes, on. Yeah. But I will say, everybody jacks off Johnsonville brats, but I think Queen City brats. Fucking eat Jacksonville's for lunch, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Well, if they're really good, wouldn't they eat themselves? <laughs> if you were a hot dog <laughs> and you were starving, <laughs> would you eat yourself? <laughs> I know I would. <laughs> First, to smother myself with brown mustard relish. I'd be so delicious. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Don't fuck uh, with my Harry Carey. I know, right? <laughs> I, I was known for that shit <laughs> in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. 
I was like the token asshole. People would be like, do you hear you hearing? <laughs> Hi! <laughs> that's, that's my roommate with uh, Hank Hill. He does Hank Hill. spot on Hank Hill. It's, it's actually kind of scary. <laughs> but people be do Hank Hill. My buddy wants to hear you do Hank Hill. I'm like, God, go fuck yourself. God damn yeah. it. It's only funny mm. when it's like a... You know, quick little yeah. throw it in there. Not when you're set yeah. up to yeah. do it. Yeah, it's got to be spontaneous. Do yeah. the thing yeah. 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 that you do. Do the dance, circus, monkey. <laughs> it, reminds, it reminds me of Parks and Rec. Again, more Parks and Rec yeah. references. But when that accountant guy is, uh, he's interviewing Ben. Oh, and that ben poor guy. Goes, he's leaving. He goes calculator and he <laughs> loses his mind. He's the funniest <laughs> thing ever. He's like, Ned, Ned, get in here, and he's. Say it again when Ned comes in. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what are you doing? And every time for the rest of the entire yeah. series. So oh funny. my god. That's great. Uh, yeah. So we're going to talk about the worst of... I don't know. I, I was know. just we'll pondering just... how existential the question is. If you were a hot dog and you were starving, <laughs> would you eat yourself? <laughs> Because you're safe. <laughs> so you can either starve to death or, or die or of eating yourself. Yeah. To death. <laughs> you only have two choices. <laughs> like, by golly, the one where you eat yourself, you at least get to enjoy a delicious hot dog before you yeah. die. <laughs> it probably hurt really well, bad. Yeah, so <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> Mm, it's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> delicious. <laughs> Maybe it wouldn't hurt because if you're a hot dog, you don't have pain receptors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're not also not sentient but you maybe that's the only thing you got or star you have like a face <laughs> and you can kind of like bend backwards and like, you, have to, just... you have to eat to sustain your hot dogness yeah <laughs> what happens does the hot dog maybe just the hot dog's parts go away i don't shrink maybe until they just gone? reform you take a bite <laughs> And then you digest it and it <laughs> comes back again. <laughs> That's even worse than Sisyphus, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, hey, what if we did, uh, we could do like an alternate reality uh, <laughs> podcast. That's kind of what we did this whole, well, not the whole yeah. time, but we... Uh, we'll expand went... on that. <laughs> we could do worst movie characters mm -hmm. since we're doing worst like um, characters like punchable <laughs> punchables <laughs> why well, I mean, just do worst characters in general i like the worst idea yeah i, I like doing do some the worst, worst of oh, shit because we can yeah. just shit on things the entire yeah. time i enjoy that yeah what if we, we highlight call some people out just do the wor <laughs> the worst of life yeah yeah <laughs> just just the worst. Yeah, the I'll worst. What, I learned it doesn't have to be the alive worst or candy bar is the Turkish delight. Yeah, I learned yeah. that last week. Yes, that was yeah. the worst. I think we can all agree that that is the worst <laughs> candy candy bar, whatever sweet treat. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> tops that as far as <laughs> being terrible. awful. I didn't it even just, taste it, and it just looked miserable. I'd yeah. rather eat good in plenties than eat a Turkish delight. That's how bad. It is it's horrible. Yeah, you weren't <sighs> delighted. No, 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 not at all. I must ask, what is wrong with Turkish people? If that's what's delighting, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have they not had anything else before? Well, they, and it's like they know how to have a little pleasure. They, uh, you got your Turkish baths. Yeah, uh, you know. <laughs> they got that. Yeah, uh, Turkish Turkish silver cigarettes. Yeah. From Camel. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They also make Turkish Golds yeah. and mm -hmm. Turkish Royal. Turkish are all over the place. Yep. Yeah. Our cat is a Turkish Angora, is his breed, and we call him Turkey Roy. So, Maybe, Turkey Roy. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should actually just talk about Turkey and all things Turkish. Well, when you said Turkey Roy, I thought of Turkey Boy. <laughs> so. <laughs> We're just yeah. playing around here, but maybe there will be a Turkey Boy podcast in the future. I'd like to. <laughs> maybe if everyone reads this book at some point, 
Turkey boy has gone home to roost. And, uh, who knows when it will be back. <laughs> well, I guess we'll do the worst. Yeah, the worst. I like the worst. I don't think it's a yeah. bad idea. I think there's a lot of things we can get out of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a lot. Pet peeves, stuff like that. Just little yeah. things that are just the worst that piss you off. Yeah. Like yeah. chewing. Chewing in general? Yeah. You don't like to chew? I don't like when other people are chewing. Oh, I, I don't like I'm silent. I hate the sound of Even if who... they have good manners. Yeah. And they're chewing with their mouth closed. I cannot stand chewing. Hmm. I just can't tune it out. It's awful. It's the worst. Well, I guess we can talk about it more next <laughs> yeah. week. The worst. <laughs> Everybody the in the worst. band's like, I'm never going to eat around yeah. your ass. <laughs> Super <laughs> self weird about it now. No. It's going to be the worst podcast <laughs> ever <laughs> next week. The worst. <laughs> your first portrait better be of, uh, of uh, Eric Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's in the new... Uh, so bring it home here. Eric Roberts is in the Condemned sequel with Randy Orton. <laughs> I just saw the trailer for it on on Raw the other night. And, uh, <laughs> it looks amazing. <laughs> well, I'm glad. I'm glad Eric Roberts is still getting work yeah. somehow. And he was in The Dark Knight. Yeah, he was good in that. He was. Sal Maroney. Uh, yeah. All right, well. I guess we'll be back with the worst next week. (laughs) The worst. The worst. All right. See you guys. Bye. See you. Have a good one. Divorce.